to the Kendall C. and Anna Ham Charitable Foundation Invention Room, which features a variety of models, patents, and documents pertaining to Porter's life as an inventor. Porter's career occurred in the 19th century when many inventors were creating new devices to make life easier for the ordinary person. While Porter was undoubtedly an artist, he was interested in the many technological discoveries and creations happening around him and was always moving to the next exciting breakthrough. His desire to keep moving forward is particularly evident in his whirlwind career in journalism. Porter's career in journalism began in 1840 when he edited the New York Mechanic. He later renamed the magazine American Mechanic to appeal to a wider audience. After leaving this publication, Porter founded and edited Scientific American in 1845 before selling it and moving on to one more publication, Scientific Mechanic. Featured in the first exhibit, are some copies of Scientific American, including a replica of the first published edition from August 28, 1845, original copies after his time as editor, and examples of what the publication looks like today. Scientific American is now the longest continuously published monthly magazine in the United States. All of Porter's magazines, which covered a wide variety of subjects, placed a focus on inventions and new technological advances. Scientific American, though not under Porter's leadership at the time, eventually founded the first branch of the U.S. Patent Agency in 1850. After writing about technology for a few years, Porter eventually dedicated more of his time to his own inventions. This invention room here explores some of his most interesting creations. One of these technological creations was the Broadway Elevated Railroad, which would place train tracks above street level. Porter proposed his invention in the January 1st, 1846 edition of Scientific American, which can be seen here. This model of the Broadway Elevated Railroad was created in 2015 by Spencer Duncan, who adapted it from Porter's illustration in Scientific American. Below is a photograph of an elevated railroad that opened a few decades after Porter's design was released. One of Porter's most significant inventions was the rotary pump, which he patented in 1855 with his colleague, J.D. Bradley. While originally created as an improved method for pumping and forcing water and other fluids, the pump became quite successful as a heart-lung apparatus that allowed for the circulation of blood outside of the body during surgery. This is a model of a rotary pump, also by Spencer Duncan, which was created in 2016 based on Porter's patent. Here is another model of a Porter invention by Spencer Duncan. This is the combined chair and cane which Porter patented in 1854. Porter, despite patenting some of his designs, was not always the best businessman. Thus, when he invented the revolving rifle, perhaps his most well-known invention, he sold the idea to Samuel Colt with no patent for $100. This is a letter of Porter's that explains the revolving rifle. Before we move on from this corner of the room, here is a glimpse of one of Porter's other designs, as well as his long list of patents. He designed over 100 inventions, of which only a quarter were patented. The invention that Porter dedicated most of his time to was the aerial locomotive, which he designed to have a hydrogen-filled spindle that would lift the vessel into the air and carry up to 200 passengers and luggage. Porter even advertised the aerial locomotive as a way to travel to California for the gold rush. Featured here is one such advertisement created in 1849, guaranteeing the aerial locomotive as the best route to the California gold rush. Porter, unfortunately, found it very difficult to receive funding. All his models were either destroyed or experienced technical difficulties. However, Porter remains an early creator of flying machines. This Spencer Duncan model of the aerial steamship was designed from Porter's own drawing. Porter created this plumbing level indicator here to determine how plumb something was, whether or not it was straight up and down, or how level it was, if it was straight side to side. This tool could be used by carpenters, masons, bricklayers, and many other types of manual laborers. If the hand on the face of the indicator is zero, the surface is level. The next invention discussed in this room is Porter's Telegraph. He advertised the telegraph in a letter to Mechanics Magazine in 1834 and claimed that it was a new and improved version, relying on visuals in the form of letters and numbers. Porter was never planning on making the telegraph himself, but instead wanted to find someone to buy his idea. The last invention displayed in this room is the corn sheller, which functions to remove individual corn kernels from a corn cob. While the maker of this sheller is unknown, it is likely that it was made by a shop 
that specialize in making patent models a requirement for every patent application. Porter patented his corn sheller in 1838, and the model reflects the details outlined in the patent. Overall, despite not being a savvy businessman, Porter was a significant inventor of the 19th century, concerned with making life easier for the everyday person through education and innovation, providing scientific and technological information to those who may not have had it otherwise.